it is very apparent that we love dinosaurs, fossils, all things like that. Paleontology on this show. And joining us today, we have Dr. Kerry Woodruff, a paleontologist at the Philip and Patricia Frost Museum of Science. This time around, a new dome-headed dinosaur species was discovered in Montana. Uh, and a study was released on it uh, this month, talking all about it. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Woodruff. Oh, thank you for having me. Let's talk about this discovery. Um, it was discovered in Ma Montana. Uh, was this something that, you know, paleontologists were on the lookout for? Did they know this existed? Uh, no, we, so when we find dinosaurs, the rock levels, we find them and we call them formations. And so, a lot of the formations around this area had these groups, of, you know, this group of dome-headed dinosaurs. But, you know, there had never been one uh, type of dome-headed dinosaur found in that formation before. But there were similar other kinds of dinosaurs between them. So we had meat-eating dinosaurs, we had other plant-eating dinosaurs, but not one of these. So, you know, it was always kind of a weird thing. Why not? So it's great to actually finally fill in this missing spot. I know, Dr. Woodruff, uh, you are one of the authors of this study. Uh, what can you tell by just looking at this dinosaur? What have you learned so far about the existence of this dinosaur? It, how old is it? Uh, so the fossils are plus or minus. We're looking at like 79 million years, 76, 79 million years, give or take. Um, but what's really interesting is so the other formations around it, so literally if you went like, I don't know, an hour east, you'd be in areas with dinosaurs where you, you do find these dome-headed dinosaurs. But they're domes, so these dinosaurs walk on two legs, but they basically have on top of their head a little bowling ball. But in all of these other ones, the, the, the dome of their head is about maybe the size of an orange. But this one is, we call it brontotholus, is so much bigger. So it's about the size of uh, a cantaloupe. And in fact, it's one of the biggest in North America. So that's really cool that not only do we have this formation that now we have the first pachycephalus, or that's these groups of dome-headed dinosaurs, but also we have one of the largest ones in North America. When we talk about, um, you said the head is the size of a cantaloupe. When we talk about how heavy uh, this dome-headed dinosaur uh, was at the time. Is there any indication to tell, you know, how big it was in terms of weight? Um, what would it eat on a regular basis? Oh, those are good questions. Um, so this group of dinosaurs, normally what we find is literally just that bowling ball mass on top of their head. And it's not actually the whole head. Like imagine I was wearing a baseball cap and I just took the hat off, right? We have the hat, so to speak, for these dinosaurs. Um, you know, it's hard to tell because the fossil is so, is during fossilization, it becomes so much heavier than the bone itself. Uh, um, and this whole group of dinosaurs, the body, so the rest of the head, the neck, the whole, everything else afterwards is pretty darn rare. We don't have a lot. Um, so we estimate this dinosaur would have been maybe about 12 feet long or so. Uh, but you know, it had a pretty long tail. Um, so it was still a you know, especially for today, like a lot bigger than deer. So, you know, bigger than most animals walking around that we would normally see. Perfect. Okay. So in terms of what happens next, uh, is there a, a situation where um, this dinosaur, uh, the fossils of this dinosaur are now put into a model? So then it's put together so we can see what it actually looked like when it existed. Uh, maybe not a model per se, but I mean, it has been fun. That is one of the neat things of a paleontologist. So like we make these discoveries and already I've seen a bunch of people online, you know, just artists who have made their own life renderings to show what the animal, you know, what they think would have looked like when it was alive. So that's pretty cool. Um, you know, scientifically for us next steps, like, you know, it will be great as other paleontologists go back to the same area. Do they find more of it? And maybe not just more domes, maybe we find, you know, more of the rest of the skeleton. So, you know, that's what I'm hopeful for is, you know, with more exploration, we'll find more of these missing pieces, if you will, that will really help us understand what this whole animal actually looked like. 
Do you, um, you know, it seems like as of lately, um, we're hearing more and more about these discoveries, at least in the mainstream, you know, for those of us who maybe, you know, are fans of paleontology, but we're not paleontologists. Um, why do you think it is that so more frequently now we're hearing about these discoveries? Well, that's a good question. Uh, I think it's a little bit of two for two reasons. So one, I mean, especially in the United States, we have so many more paleontologists today than literally than like when I was a student starting out. So, you know, when you have more people walking around looking for something, the more often you're gonna find something, right? So every summer we make brand new discoveries, which is great. But also like this dinosaur, I mean, some of these fossils of this new dinosaur, and we have five individuals. So some of them were found in 1985 but they weren't really recognized as maybe being a new kind of dinosaur, you know? So as well, you know, with new technologies, just even new people asking questions, will we will continue to actually make new discoveries from things that had been sitting in museums for decades. So that's actually a really cool thing because when I go to museums, yeah, we can look at a new fossil that a crew found, but we also have a chance of, making a new discovery from something that's literally just been sitting on a shelf. You said that there are five, it, it sounds like five varieties of this type of dinosaur. Hopefully I heard you right there. Is that what you said? I wanna make sure I'm clear on that before my next question. So there are five individuals. So we have five of the, those bowling ball domes. Got it, okay. With that being said, um, when you made this discovery was, you know, were there five in a row? You said one was discovered in 1985. How can you identify that they're all, you know, from the same family? Oh, that's a good question. Um, so, so, yeah, so two of the specimens together were found in 1985 and others were, you know, subsequent years. But there are basically attributes. So that bowling ball bit of dome actually has these spots along the sides of them where all of these other bones would attach. So almost imagine like bone Velcro in a way. And there are all these little ridges and troughs where these other bones would have attached. And so in this group of dinosaurs, we know that the, basically the size and shape of those other bones, and you can almost see kind of like puzzle pieces. You can almost see like where those, they would go. So the, height, the length, the width, even basically all of those inner digitations for how the bones attach are different from the, between all of these different species of these dome-headed dinosaurs. So those were all together the different attributes. So we had a lot of features, even though we just have the dome, right? There's a lot of features on those domes. Think of it like a fingerprint, right? You know, we have a lot of features that let us say, oh, these five individuals are all of the same kind of dinosaur, this new kind, and these features are not like any others that we've found previously. Got it. Okay. Here's my final question, and it may be a little off the cuff, okay? So roll with the punches on this one, uh, Dr. Woodruff. You know, I saw an image of, you know, what this would have looked like millions and millions of years ago, and my first thought was, how in the heck did the folks that did the alien movies know that there would be something out there that kind of looked like an alien? <laughs> is that crazy? Is that happenstance? Or am I completely wrong about that? Uh, I, I mean, you know, both the xenomorph and aliens and this dinosaur walked on two legs. They have a long tail. I mean, this thing, our dinosaur is a, literally, I mean, imagine a bowling ball on top of its head. You know, the, the Xenomorphs and the Alien franchise have like this weird, I mean, it's really cool, but like this really elongate, frilly looking head. So, I mean, they're, I think they, I, I don't think they would mistake one another, um, but you know, it is neat. Like, I mean, a lot of, a lot of movie monsters and the aliens, you know, as well in those movies. I mean, a lot of these Hollywood folks get inspiration from, you know, if you're making up an animal, a good place to start is an animal that was either is right. alive or was alive. So, you know, if one of these dinosaurs subsequently, you know, spawn, you know, really, you know, inspires a future movie monster and not talking about Jurassic Park, but like something made up, like, I think that'd be really cool.
Yeah, I think so, too. Well, Dr. Carrie Woodruff, uh, it has been a pleasure talking all things paleontology with you. Uh, really appreciate you joining us here in Chicago on Chicago Live. Thank you so much for your time. And let us know uh, what you research and uncover next so we can have you back on. We appreciate your time. I will. Thank you.